Hi dear students, we are studying calculus and in calculus we are studying differentiation. So we are on the last leg of the differentiation. Today we are going to see the chain rule. Now what do we actually mean by chain rule in differentiation if you ask? If I am given a function say like this y is equal to sin of cos x. So this is a function. Now if I look at this function I see that cos x itself is a function and sin is another function. What I mean? So this function y is function of function of x, right? In general term if I write then I may be writing like this y is equal to function of function of x like this. So this is a complex function. So therefore when I have function of function of x to differentiate this function we use chain rule. So what the chain rule says is when you have like this complex functions or what I am going to do is I am going to assign this g of x this function inner function as u. If I assign this one as u then I would have y as function of u. Now what I am going to do when I look at this what I understand is this y now becomes function of u and u becomes function of x. So what I would do is I will differentiate this u in terms of x in that case I am going to have du over dx and I am going to differentiate y as a function of u. So I am going to get dy over du. However, I will have to differentiate this one as dy over dx. So I want the result dy of dx. Meantime, I have assigned the inner function as u. So I am going to differentiate u because u becomes now function of x. So I am differentiating u as du over dx y in turn becomes function of u, I am differentiating this one, I am going to find the product of this two. So when I find the product of this two, say dy over du times du over dx and in this case if I see this and this goes off, I am left with dy over dx which is my motive to obtain. So therefore, this is what I call a chain rule. Now let us try to differentiate this function. What is the differentiation of this one? So I am given the function y is equal to sin of cos x. In this case I am going to assign cos x as u such that for me y becomes sin u. Now I am going to differentiate this in terms of u. So I am going to get dy over du is equal to I know that this is simply cos u. So I have differentiated this one in terms of u. I am going to differentiate u in terms of x. So therefore du over dx is equal to cos x I am going to have minus sin x. Now in order to differentiate this function I am having dy over dx which is nothing but dy over du my chain rule into du over dx chain rule to apply this I get dy over dx is equal to dy over du is this one so I say this is cos u times I am having this is minus sin x. Now the 
assumed value u or the assigned value u I am going to replace it with. So, therefore, dy over dx is equal to I am going to write this first. So, this is sin x times cos u, u for me is cos x. So, therefore, cos x. So, this becomes the differentiation of this function y is equal to sin of cos x. Let us move on to another problem, we will try to solve it using chain rule. The problem is say y is equal to sin of x square plus 1. So, let us say this is my problem. So, in this case when I look at x square plus 1 itself is a function of x in turn sin becomes another function. So, this is this is what the given function is and I am asked to differentiate this one with respect to x. So, for me the question is what is this dy by dx. To do so what I will do is I am going to assign the inner function x square plus 1 as u. In turn now the function I will write it as y is equal to sin of u. Using chain rule I will differentiate this one as dy over dx is equal to sin simply becomes cos u. In turn u I can substitute here. So, this will become cos of x square plus 1 and I will differentiate this du over dx is equal to I am going to get d over dx of x square plus 1. Yesterday we saw we have two terms we can separately differentiate. So, if I differentiate this x square I am going to get 2 x and this 1 is a constant if I differentiate I am going to get 0. So, I leave as such and finally, dy over dx is equal to chain rule is nothing but product of this two. So, therefore, cos of x square plus 1 times 2 x rewriting the answer I am getting dy over dx is equal to 2 x cos of x square plus 1. So, this is the differentiation of the function y is equal to sin of x square plus 1. Let us try to solve another problem. Again I am going to use chain rule, but this time I am going to use the short trick. I have learned the chain rule how to differentiate it, but how quickly I can solve the function. So, let us take a function I say I am given y is equal to say root over log of x square is the function. I want to solve this one in the sense I am asked to solve what is dy over dx. Now, what I will do is instead of using this chain rule finding separately what I am going to use is I will look at the function and I will see which function is the outermost function then which one is the inner function if I have further function which is the innermost function. In that case this square root is the outermost function then becomes log inner function then innermost function is x square. So, what the technique is first I will differentiate the outermost function keeping all other inner functions as such then multiplied by next what is the inner function I will differentiate that inner function then multiplied by then which is the innermost function I will differentiate this is the simple technique of differentiating the function when we have like this function of functions. So, in that case now see directly I am going to differentiate dy over dx is equal to I said root over this. Do you remember yesterday we solved the function y is equal to root over x as y is equal to 1 over 2 times root over x. This is what we solved. 
sir how did we solve this becomes equal to x power half so power times x power minus 1 so half minus 1 was minus half so minus half goes to the denominator so x power half at the denominator which is nothing but root x so if i if i see this is the differentiation in that case if i relate this one what i will have to get i will have to get 1 over 2 times within root whatever the function i have the entire function i am going to write so root over log of x square so i have differentiated the outermost function then i am looking for the inner function so for me the inner function is log of x square so multiplied by yesterday we saw y is equal to log x function when we differentiated this function dy over dx we got 1 by x so as such i have the inner function as log x square so when i compare this one so that means when i differentiate i am going to get 1 over simply x square so i have differentiated the inner square multiplied by then innermost function i see innermost function is x square for me and we know if we differentiate x square with respect to x we are going to get 2x so simply i write 2x now rearranging this 2 and this 2 goes off 1x goes off and I am left with dy over dx is equal to 1 over x times root of log x square is the differentiation of the above function. So uh, students we must learn this shortcut method because this will become handy when we do a lot of differentiations. If I am given the function say y is equal to log of say 3x square plus 4x plus 2. So when I look at the function I see that log itself is a function of x and within that I am, I am having one more function 3x square plus 4x plus 2. So I know that I will have to use chain rule because it is function of function and shortcut I told you first I will identify the outermost function I will differentiate that one multiplied by differentiation of the inner function I have two functions here so therefore it is easy for me so thus I have dy over dx shortcut method the outer function is log for me so log of x is 1 by x I know so therefore 1 over 3 x square plus 4 x plus 2 this complete I treat it as u so therefore this goes to the denominator and then multiplied by I see the inner function inner function is this one I am going to differentiate this inner function so to differentiate this inner function I will have to differentiate these terms separately in that case I am going to have differentiation of 3 x square so 3 times 2 is 6 x power 2 minus 1 is x so therefore I have 6 x plus 4 differentiation of a constant is 0 so therefore I have differentiated the inner function as such I have dy over dx is equal to rewriting so 6 x plus 4 over 3 x square plus 4 x plus 2. So this becomes the differentiation of this function. Now I am going to differentiate one function which is going to have both product of the functions and will also have quotient of functions. Let us try to solve one such function. Let us say the function is say like this y is equal to root x times uh, say x square minus 2x plus 4 over say x square plus 1. So this is the function given to me. So if I see root x times this, so these are the product of functions and over x square plus 1, so this is 
in question form also. So, now I can use product form separately and quotient form separately. I mean I can take to the numerator. However, what I am going to do is I am going to use quotient form and within quotient form I am going to use the product form also. So, in that case kindly verify dy over dx this is equal to first quotient form I know that when I take the quotient form I will square the denominator yesterday we saw the formula. So, x square plus 1 whole square. So, I have squared the denominator. Next part what we will do denominator into differentiation of numerator. So, this times root x into x square minus 2 x plus 4. So, denominator into differentiation of numerator minus numerator into, so I put the numerator in front, so root x, x square minus 2 x plus 4. So, numerator into differentiation of denominator, so differentiation of denominator is for me x square plus 1, x square plus 1. Now, in this case dy over dx is equal to say denominator x square plus 1 whole square for me. Here x square plus 1. Now, I will have to differentiate this one. I see product of the two functions. Now, what I am going to do straight away I am going to apply the product rule. So, second function I write first. So, x square minus 2 x plus 4 second function into differentiation of first function. So, differentiation of root x is 1 by 2 root x. So, I write 1 over 2 times root x plus first function root x into differentiation of the second function. So, differentiation of second function I know that I will differentiate each term separately. So, x square becomes 2 x minus 2 x becomes minus 2 and constant becomes 0. So, therefore, this part is over for me. So, I will close the bracket minus this part I am going to keep as such I need not do anything. So, therefore, root x times x square minus 2 x plus 4 plus 4, I will have to differentiate this term. In that case, two terms I have, this is constant, it will become 0. So, differentiation of x square is straight away 2 x for me. So, now I have completely differentiated the expression. Now, I will have to rearrange mathematically and I have to write the expression. So, therefore, this becomes my differentiation of the given function this is my differentiation of the given function as such. So, dear students, so far we have seen how to differentiate a function. We have another concept called double differentiation. So, let us have the idea about double differentiation. double differentiation is nothing but differentiating a function twice. Sir, what do you mean by differentiating a function twice? So, let me suppose that I am given a function y is equal to say x power 3 and I am asked to find the double differentiation of this function. What we actually mean is see first time I am going to differentiate dy over dx. This very well I know that power times power minus 1, 3 minus 1 is 2. So, this is 3 x square. Now, to find double differentiation, I am going to differentiate this function once again. So, this is a function. When I said y is a function of x, I actually meant that as the value of x varies, the value of y changes. 
This time, if I look at this expression, I see that as the value of x is changing, now the value of dy by dx is changing. So I would say that this dy by dx is a function of x. So therefore, I am going to differentiate this function. So when I differentiate, I write like this d over dx of this function dy by dx. So I am differentiating this function with respect to x once again. So this becomes equal to the same rule that I am going to apply dy by dx for me is 3x square. So 3 is a constant times now power times x power minus 1. So power is 2 this time and x power 2 minus 1. Now this differentiation we write symbolically like this and we say this d2y over dx square. This is the way how we pronounce d2y over dx square which is equal to 3 times 2 happens to be 6 x power 1. So this is the double differentiation of this function. So hopefully you understood that when we say double differentiation it is nothing but you differentiate once the given function and whatever the thing that you get after differentiating you again differentiate that function and that will be the final answer of double differentiation of this function. Now let us see another concept called maxima and minima. So let me suppose that I have a function and I have graphed the function. When I have graphed the function in the sense I have plotted the graph. So y is a function of x and let me suppose that I have plotted the graph and the graph is like this and I want to study what or how we find the maxima and minima. So first I need to understand what is maxima and minima. See dear students, I have plotted the graph y as a function of x. When I look at the graph, I see that the value of x is increasing when I move in this direction. So as the value of x changes, I see the value of y is different for different value of x. For this particular value of x, the value of y is this. For this particular value of x, the value of y is different. So as the value of x is changing, the value of x also changes. Now question is, at what value of x the value of y is maximum? If that is asked, I see that the value of y is maximum at this point and the corresponding value of x is this. So at this particular value of x, the value of y is maximum and therefore this point we call it as maxima. This is the maxima. Similarly, if the question is asked, when I move or when I change the value of x, I see that the value of y is changing. What is the value, what is the minimum value of y if I am asked? Then I see that the minimum value of y happens to be here at this point. So this is the minimum value of y corresponding to this value of x and we say this as the minima, this as the minima. So maxima and minima, when we graph a function, we see that what is the maximum value of the function and what is the minimum value of the function. Now mathematically we have to at times calculate what is the value of maxima and what is the value of minima. To do that, what we do in calculus is, now I see that the value of y is changing with respect to x. I see that the slope of this function varies as I change the value of x because slope is nothing but tangent. If I go on drawing, I see that at the maxima, the slope becomes like this. So slope at maxima is 0. Slope how do we calculate? Slope we calculate by dy by dx by calculating. 
So, dy by dx at the maximum point is equal to 0. So, at maxima dy is dy by dx is 0. So, dy by dx is slope. So, I can say that slope at maxima is 0. Similarly, if, if I further follow the graph, I see that the slope is continuously changing and when I see at the minima, again at minima the slope is 0. So, when I when the slope is 0, so that again I say dy over dx is equal to 0. So, it means it is very easy to identify at what value of x the minimum value of the function y is, at what value of x the maximum value of the function y is. How? I am going to differentiate the function with respect to x and I am going to equate that value as 0 and I will calculate what is the value of x. But then dy by dx is 0 at maxima and dy by dx is 0 at minima also. Then how would we come to know whether the value that I calculated x at which the maxima or minima happens, so whether that value is maxima or minima. So to do that, what I would do is first I will calculate dy over dx, then I will equate that value to 0. The value of x that I am going to get will be the point of either minima or the point at maxima. Next what I am going to do is I will calculate the second differentiation dy over dx square. So, when I calculate this actually what is this? This is nothing but d over dx of dy over dx this what? So, this is second differentiation. Now, you said that dy over dx is nothing but we are calculating slope. So, it means again I do d by dx of dy by dx that means I am calculating the slope of dy by dx slope of dy by dx. So, then if my value of x at which maxima occurs I am calculating the slope see slope is changing. So, when the slope is changing, so slope of slope when I see, see here it is 0, then slope of slope turns negative. Here the slope of slope turns negative. This is the slope, positive slope, negative slope, this is negative. So, slope of slope turns negative. That means slope of slope turns negative, that means that is maxima. If I see here, see the slope here it is positive, uh, negative and here 0 and here it is positive. So, I see the slope of slope, the slope is changing. So, the slope of slope turns out to be positive. That means the slope of slope when it is negative that means less than 0 that means I am at maxima. And if I see the slope of the slope dy over dx that is what d2y over dx square. If the slope turns positive, positive means it is greater than 0. In that case, I am going to say that the point is minima. So, it is very simple to calculate maxima and minima. What I am going to do? The given function first I am going to differentiate and I am going to equate it to 0 and I will find the value of x at which maxima or minima occurs. Then to check whether it is maxima or minima, I am going to again differentiate second time this function and I am going to look for whether the value is less than 0 or greater than 0. If it is less than 0, I am going to say that it is maxima and if it is greater than 0, I am going to say it is minima. I am going to solve one problem for you. So, let me say that I am given a function find maxima or minima sorry say maxima and minima of a function y is equal to say x cube minus 12 x square this is the function given 
and to find the maxima and minima I told you first I am going to differentiate. So in that case say dy over dx is equal to power times power minus 1 x square minus 12 into power 2 is 24 for me and power minus 1 is 1 so 24 x. So this is the differentiation. Now I know that whenever maxima or minima happens it will be the slope will be equal to 0. So I am going to equate this one 0. So 3 x square minus 24 x is equal to 0. So I get 3 x x minus 8 is equal to 0. So I get x is equal to 0 or plus 8. So these are the two values at maxima or minima occurs. So now I want to check which value has maxima or minima. So what I would do, I would again differentiate this function. So differentiating again, I am going to have d2y over dx square which is equal to, if I differentiate this function, I am going 3 times 2 is 6x minus 24. Now I have differentiated second time, now I am going to substitute this value and I am going to check whether it is less than 0 or greater than 0. So let me take case 1. In case 1, I am going to substitute the value of x to 0 in this one and I check. So 6 times 0 is 0. So I get d2y over dx square is equal to 6 times 0 minus 24 which is equal to minus 24 and I see which is less than 0. I set the condition when d2y over dx square is less than 0 that means this is maxima. That means if you graph the function, if you graph the function then you are going to have the maximum value at x is equal to 0. Case 2 if I take I have 8 so if I substitute the value of x as 8 so d2y over dx square will be equal to 6 times 8 minus 24 which is 6 eighths of 48. So 48 minus 24 is going to be plus 24 for me which is greater than 0 and the condition says if it is greater than 0 then it says that minima. That means if I graph the function I am going to get one maxima and one minima. Maxima happens to be at the value of x is equal to 0 and minima occurs at the value of x is equal to 8. So this is how we find maxima and minima. Dear students, let me wind up this session now. In the next session, we shall see the introductory part of uh, integration and we shall solve some of the problems based on the integration. Thank you very much.